God's enemies. God's enemies. We persist today because we know it matters. We persist today because we know it matters. We're looking today at our epistle reading in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, specifically th verses 3 through 12. And we are considering yet another, yes, another church that because they are following Christ are being persecuted for their faith. And this is the Thessalonian church. It's often difficult for we, the American public, and many Christians of every stripe and faction, to face in the clear and repeated teachings of the Old and New Testament regarding eternal judgment. Now sometimes we react so strongly because there have been people that have used the judgment of God like a bat. By guilt and shame and fear, there have been people who have been baptized. There have been people who have put their faith in Christ. But in the end, fear does not save us. It's not a fruit of the Spirit. The working of the Spirit of God in conversion must have love. Certainly we can weigh the consequences of eternal judgment. But in the end, we're turning from our lives and turning to Jesus because we believe him to be the Savior. And God so loved the world that he sent his Son. He does not take pleasure in punishment. However, you may have noticed over the past months that Holy Scripture, our Scripture lectionary readings, Jesus, the apostles, and the historic church do not avoid the reality of a final judgment. I wonder why then so many scholars, leaders, and priests are bent on avoiding the teaching regarding eternal life or eternal separation from God. Could it be that those teachings, the preaching, the learning, and the worshiping that those who are hearing would prefer a more palatable Christianity to suit their tastes and to suit the tastes of their students and their parishioners. But what does Paul mean when he says, writing to Timothy, and this is 2 Timothy chapter 4, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, that's in our creed, by the way, and in view of his appearing in his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, Timothy, as you're pastoring, proclaim the message, be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable, convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. However, in reflecting on eternal judgment, many who have personally faced human evil at its worst know the comfort of the surety of a final justice for those who seem to have escaped any consequences in this life. A spouse watching their beloved killed in front of them, powerless to stop the cruelty. The family member facing the harm done to their children, family or friends by the violent and the perverse. Personal destitution and bankruptcy due to the corruption and greed of others. Scams schemes, and outright theft. Mr. Bernie Madoff comes to mind. Those who realize the brokenness and emptiness of the world once they've had to face dreams deferred, commitment with pouring your life into something and commitment with little seeming reward, relational pain, expectations, and disappointment, and then the overwhelming reality of how vulnerable we humans truly are. COVID could be a lesson for us. 
The scriptures also make it clear time and time again that no matter how we perceive humanity, how much we may love or like an individual human being, only God knows the heart and the penchant for evil if humanity is left to themselves. As a review, if you want to look at a good story about that, revisit Noah and the flood. Paul in our passage today is not giving the Thessalonian Christians in the book of 2 Thessalonians Thessalonians, a downer set of sermons. You see, the letters were largely read in the congregations. He's not trying to depress them about the end of the world. He is trying to encourage them that what they are facing in their faithfulness to Christ is worth their effort. In the end, God's enemies, those who in this case are brutally and casually persecuting them, will find final judgment if they don't repent. But those who have been redeemed and changed in heart through conversion avoid what they deserve because of the sacrifice and resurrection of Jesus who is the Christ. Jesus, as he said today in our gospel reading, I have come to seek and save those who are lost. People who think they're found without Christ don't need him. People who realize their need consider him. We persist today because we know it matters. Are you starting to notice a theme in this regard to suffering and faithfulness in so many of the different books of New Testament? Why? Why is this? Because if these people chose, if these Christians chose a faithfulness and an identity and a following of Jesus Christ, they could risk losing everything. Now, I have no desire for our church or in the American country that we live, our nation, to see religious persecution break out for those who are being faithful. But that being said, when we choose Christ, we are more and more choosing something that is not possible, or excuse me, not popular, and it's not because we're going out and ignoring people, or we're going out and annoying people and pushing it in their face. It's because there's more and more a hostility to the idea that there's right and wrong, and that there's a God who requires faithfulness and obedience. Let's look at their passage today. First of all, keep on doing what you're doing, he says. Look in verse 3. We must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as it is right, because your faith is growing abundantly and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith during all your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God and is intended to make you worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also are suffering. Keep up the good work, he says. Why? Instead of becoming angry, instead of being difficult with one another because the pressure's on, and we know those temptations when we're going through difficult times, they have grown in loving and coming together and loving and supporting one another. They have grown stronger in their faith as they have felt that solidarity through the word and spirit and sacrament in coming together. They're doing well in their faithfulness, but Paul is afraid they're going to get knocked off course. And we don't have time to look at today, but there is false teaching that's going on that is being spread that the resurrection, yes, Jesus' resurrection has happened, but the final resurrection has happened, and now Christ has come, and he has it. He also knows that when you're getting pounded over and over again, there is a need for encouragement and the strength of the Holy Spirit and a reminder of what matters. When Hitler came to power in Germany, there was a very large and national church, the German Lutheran Church. It is now called the Evangelical Lutheran Church. And the word evangelical there has a broader meaning than it is also than we also use it sometimes in the States. But the German Lutheran Church had a decision when Hitler came to power. 
To stay in their positions, those in charge were going to need to support Hitler. To go against Hitler would have its repercussions. Most of the church went along with Hitler. Most of the church and their leadership choose, chose to be comfortable versus faithful. But some didn't. Dietrich Bonhoeffer is one of those that is known for being faithful. Karl Barth, who was a, a the, not a German um, national, but he was a German theologian who taught in the universities, wrote the Barman Declaration talking about the evils of Nazism and how the church was remaining silence, silent to what they were doing and why. So do we have a Christianity that matters? And if so, will we embrace discomfort, inconvenience, and unpopularity through the power of the Word, the Holy Spirit, and the sacraments? You see, it is when we must lose something or risk something that we learn about what truly matters to us. But thanks be to God that his grace and power go with us. Now, the intent of my words right now in challenge are not to make you feel guilty. It's not to put on some kind of you better get it right or God's not going to love you and support you. It is the reminder that what we are doing is worth it, and when we follow Christ and open our hearts to his love and peace, we find out what love and what peace really is about. We find out that life can have meaning instead of emptiness. We find out those things that we see in the world after we watch the news or read the news or find out what's going on at work that as bad as that is, it's not the end, and someday it'll be dealt with. But when we take our way of comfort, we take the easy route in picking a Christianity that fits into our schedule, a Christianity that fits into when we have time to consider it or follow Christ or do what's what, there's an emptiness and a hollowness that goes along with it it's much harder to sustain our faith. But we persist today because we know it matters and our God graciously calls us and this is why they are being tested in part so that they may show the world through their suffering that they are followers of God. And that's why it says what? This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God that what you're doing Yes, you're only righteous and forgiven because of Christ, but what you're doing is important and your good works and faithfulness will have eternal ramifications. Secondly, the final judgment will make things right. The final judgment will make things right. Verse 5. Let's go with 6. For it is indeed just of God to repay with affliction those who afflict you and to give relief to the afflicted as well as to us. When the Lord Jesus Christ is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, these will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction, separated from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might when he comes to be glorified by his saints and to be marveled at on the day among all who have believed because our testimony to you, the gospel they preached, was believed. The final judgment makes things right. Now remember, when he talks about these people as being enemies of God, it is God who's saying that there is enemies, not necessarily us. This is the point of, of Matthew chapter 7. It isn't that we aren't supposed to separate good and evil or when we see patterns of behavior in someone that leads to us to understand their character and how to respond to them. But we are not to put ourselves in the place of judge and punisher. God is a vengeful God and a wrathful God. For us humans to be wrathful and vengeful is wrong, is evil. We are not God, but God, this is the same holy God who said, I could leave this entire sinful world and humans to self-destruction, but I'm going to send my only son because for God so loved the world he gave. He 
didn't have to do it. Matter of fact, the Godhead suffered when Christ suffered in some way. And Christ came down and he took on the form of limited flesh because he loved us. So God doesn't enjoy punishment. He doesn't enjoy separating evil and seeing those go into destruction. But evil and wickedness cannot live in his world and in his presence. He loves us. And yet because he loves us, he will bring justice. And they, those who are afflicting them and attacking them and glibly enjoying it will in the end face a final day. But repentance is still offered to them. The final judgment makes things right. Those who seem to be getting away with things, those who have the power and the money and then seem to have their thumb on maybe your back or neck or your situation. All the consternation and the annoying political ads right now, which are more about knocking the other guy down than giving you an understanding of the differences of the positions and why they believe what they believe. We look at this broken world and we wonder, is there hope? And the answer for those in Christ is yes, there is. Because in the end, the wrong is made right. Finally, the glorification of his saints, verse 10 and 12. When he comes to be glorified by his saints and to be marveled at on that day among all who believe because of our testimony to you was believed, to this end, we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith so that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. It comes back again to a repeated theme in the New Testament. As you suffer giving glory and faithfulness to God. Glory and praise is projected as people watch your faithfulness in the midst of a suffering and are astounded that you put up with it. That doesn't mean we don't fight for justice. That doesn't mean we don't fight for the weak and those who are being maligned. Absolutely not. What it means is when we've done all and have no power, we will suffer and choose to do what's right, not choose to do what's wrong. That takes the power of the Spirit. That takes a changed heart because in the world's eyes, it doesn't make sense. But that's what Jesus did. He knew he had to go to the cross to be the perfect sacrifice for our sins. And they beat him and they spit on him and they put him on a cross and he did it and he said to his father, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Now, I don't know about you. And I'm on that road of being a person of forgiveness and love. But I'm not sure I'm at the place where if I was on the cross after what he'd been, that it would have been an easy thing for me to say, Father, forgive them. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, we could. Yes, sometimes being a Christian is hard. Being faithful and sticking with it through really bad days is hard. But I'm here to declare to you that we persist because we know it matters. And the way we live our lives has the potential to show the final glory of God that those in Christ will all experience. And those who, with hatred and violence and rebellion and disobedience to God's gospel, as Paul says, will find a final justice. We persist because we know it matters. Thanks be to God.